Hi everyone, we're here with Adrian Picker, a very special guest, someone who's managed to crack the innovation code, a true innovation hacker who's able to create real-world results with his thoughts and actions. I'll let Adrian introduce himself. Hey, thanks for having me. So, by hacking innovation, uh, basically, we, we mean understanding the concepts that allow you to innovate. So I apply that in, in some of my projects that, uh, that I started. I apply that to some of the companies that I've been working with or consulting with. Um, and uh, if, you, if you apply, let's not say just like the recipe, because it's, it's much more complex than a recipe because it's, it's a wide set of instruments that, that you need to apply in order to come up with new products, new ideas that actually you can launch to the market and have customers. But if you start to apply these lean startup uh, concepts like Blue Ocean Strategy, you will see that uh, the business that you're operating is going to start shifting towards an area where you will reach more clients, more profitability, you will start to be different from your, uh, from your competitors. And fantastic. That's fantastic. So in a word, uh, how would you define innovation in the real world today? So, well, it, it depends um, how you tackle it. If you tackle it from like a small startup or a big corporation. But I think it's very important to understand one thing. Problems rarely change from generation to generation. But the way we're solving them is changing constantly. So if you take any uh, need that you have, let's say the need for transportation, and you go back and it have, has been solved with the help of horses and carriages, and then it was solved with the help of trains, and then this new thing called automobile came along and disrupted an industry, and then this other new thing came along that is called Uber or Grab came and disrupted. So the problem was still the same. The solution is the one that kept changing and adapting. So it's very, very important to look around us and see the problems that are around us and that they are solved in the same way for a long time. And then see how we can build the next best solution using technology and using innovation in order to solve that problem. So I think this is very, very important to keep in mind. Tell me something perhaps a story or, or some experience that you think uh, has driven and given you some insight into, into innovation, growth and entrepreneurship? So I did, I did a lot of um, experiments and I, I was always a huge fan of the Lean Startup principles. And, and whenever you, you preach those principles where like you just build a prototype, just start, just start something, fail and learn from the failure. And there's a lot of people saying, yeah, but that's like, it says that in the book, but can you actually do it? And, and yes, you can do it. And there are, there are so many companies that have done this. And uh, I, was, I was once challenged uh, by uh, some students in a workshop that I did. And they were like, yeah, but like, I'm originally from Romania. And like Eastern Europe has probably a long way to come to get to kind of like Silicon Valley standard of uh, technology being everywhere. And they were like, yeah, but like, how can you do something here? Because you say that, but that works in Silicon Valley. Maybe it works in London or in Berlin, but it can't work in Eastern Europe. And I was like, for sure it can work. It can work everywhere. The principles are the same. So I was challenged and I said, okay, um, I will try to come up with a product and I can guarantee that I have revenue in less than a month. So, so I came up with, with a, a very simple uh, idea. Uh, so basically the idea was to have some sort of uh, cereal mixes for breakfast that were so much better and different that's out there in the market that were packaged in the right amount uh, so you can serve them with once. You don't need to buy a big box. You can just order a box with many one portion ready-made mixes that contain everything that you want like cereals and fruits and nuts and so on. Um, and and you, you do this all together and you can order it by subscription. So kind of like a subscription type of box. Um, so I, the, the idea wasn't new. It was about the execution behind it. Um, 
that product did not exist on the on the Romanian market. It was the Uber of cereals. <laughs> Something like that. So I wasn't, the, the point of that, I was like busy with too many projects at the time anyway, but I wanted to prove that it can be done. So what I did, uh, basically we did a very basic uh, landing page where you could order a few, uh, a few boxes. Um, I found a supplier for boxes. I found a supplier for packages. I found a supplier for uh, all the ingredients for the mixes that I was okay. gonna So hang build. on, yeah. what was your experience in food marketing, uh, uh, FMCG well, marketing in so, before this? Uh, FMG, uh, no, none. In marketing, yeah, I mean, my background is in marketing. I had an advertising agency. I kind of knew how to promote, but I did not use that. I mean, I used like very little, I will tell you later. Uh, the experience in food, uh, was also small in the sense that I did build a restaurant uh, and I operated it for a few months until I saw that food business is very hard and I was lucky enough to be able to sell it uh, within like uh, six months after I, I finished building it. Like I built it from scratch. Um, and after that, I, I swore that I would not do food business again uh, because it takes so much of your time and I found it to be very hard to scale. But for the sake of this experiment, I said, okay, I will do that because uh, food your reputation is... was on the line. <laughs> exactly. So and and food is so easy. I mean, it's uh, like you need to eat three times a day. That that makes it for a good market opportunity in my perspective. So so I find suppliers for like every little thing that I needed, uh, which took me like a day. Um, I took my computer. I created the logo. Went to a local print shop. Printed labels. Ordered everything. And I went to a local restaurant owner. And I asked him if he could like mix everything and put it into the packages uh, because he had a restaurant that was allowed to operate with food, but he had downtime. Like during lunch and dinner, he had employees that had almost nothing to do there. So he was very happy to put his employees to work. And I got a very good price per hour for him to like kind of mix everything, uh, label everything. So uh, I outsourced that. Yeah. So it took me less than a week to create the first product, the box the, the, with the cereals in it, all packaged individually, labeled and so on. Um, mind you, I did not create any company. I, I was in, in the uh, gray area of the economy. Um, I, I set up a PayPal account because not having a company, I couldn't uh, mm -hmm. charge money. I just quickly set up a PayPal account. And what I did, I sent um, some demo boxes with, with just one, um, one sample from all the flavors that, uh, of the mixes that I did, I sent them to some friends randomly. And what they did, they, uh, they received it as a gift, they opened it, they posted uh, pictures on social media, and the labels were indicated in the website. So long story short, um, I had almost $1,000 of sales in the first month. Um, and this pretty much qualifies as a very good um, application of the Lean Startup principles. I did that for about two months and then I stopped because I had other things in mind. Uh, but I was happy to see that a couple of months uh, later, a Romanian company actually started to do that. Awesome. Um, and uh, I don't know if they were influenced or not. I didn't get to talk to the, to the owner, but there was a trend coming. Like th these products were existing in the US and the UK and so on. Um, but the point was that with minimal investment, like I think I spent in total about $100, $150 to purchase like the ingredients, the boxes, printing the labels, setting up the website. So the cost was minimum. There's like literally no excuse that you need capital or investment to start something. No, you will need that later to grow for sure. But to start, to validate and to have your first customers, there are very few businesses probably where you cannot prototype. So you can use the Lean Startup principles to validate an innovative idea, take it to the market and have your first customers. I, I find that when you look at a startup or as a startup is trying to scale, the, the, once the product is validated and they have some success, then they have a bigger challenge. So, so a lot of our viewers are uh, having the challenge where uh, they've got the product, they've, they've, they've got some success, but they just can't seem to cross that chasm. That's where a, a marketer and a product manager usually comes into play. And that's, that's something that I noticed and it's very, it's a key point for a lot of companies. Because what happens, oftentimes digital companies are started by um, computer engineers, which are very bright, talented programmers uh, with very little sensitivity towards marketing.
So they are ab able to build the, the website, the application at very low cost because they are doing it themselves. If it happens that they are solving a problem that also works good because they are having the first traction, but when it's time to grow, that's where business and marketing knowledge comes into play. So let's, let's take that crossing the chasm because it's one of the aspects that I talk about in my workshops. And Probably that's even a bit too much to talk about the chasm because a lot of the, the products out there don't even, even reach. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But, but what happens is people forget who they are marketing to. So whenever I'm, I'm, I'm challenging startups, which I'm mentoring, I'm like, who's your customer? And they are giving me, uh, well, our customers are young people living in cities with the ages of uh, 20 to 40. And I'm like, okay, can we stop? Like... You're lying. You're lying to me, but you're lying to yourself. No. Describe me the first 10 customers that you have. Which are the first 10 customers that you will have? And you go, need to go very, very deep. You need to go into like people that just moved to the city to be the students and they are within their first two months in that city. You need to go that granular to find the first 10 people that have that problem as a pain. Now, those are your first customers. And then if you, if you use the business model canvas, then if you put there this information, if you have found out who your true first user will be, then you know how to reach them. Then you know how to market to them. If you tell me young people 20 to 40, that's like everybody. Your marketing budget is going nowhere. You're going to have to buy ads and, and compete with Coca-Cola. You're doing nothing. No, you need to find those people that are within your niche. You need to find, for example, mothers that just gave birth in the last two months and have that sp special income and their child has some characteristic or some problems. And that's when you know who to talk to. And that's where you, you know where to find them. You know to find them probably in some support groups. You're going you're gonna to be able to find them in the supermarket, in the aisle where they buy stuff for, for their young kids. So, and then your marketing becomes simple. And then you know how to talk to them. And, and there you have your first group of people. And if we go broader and we talk about uh, crossing the cast, a lot of companies think who their main customers would be. The majority. But that comes later. And if you apply the marketing that you think that would work for the majority to the first people that will try your product, who are the, the innovators and the early adopters, that marketing doesn't work that those are users with different motivations. So you need to have a specific market for them, a specific marketing channels for them. Now, when you reach that number and you need to go to the majority, you need to remember that you need to switch your marketing. You are talking to a different user now with different motivation, different needs, and different use case scenarios. And going back to, to what Clayton Christensen was saying when he was describing disruptive innovation, don't forget what your users are hiring your product to do. If you don't coin that perfectly, you enter the risk of talking to the wrong audience and you're spending your marketing dollars and efforts in the wrong place. And then you come and say, well, innovation is difficult and startups are difficult. Well, yeah, nobody's saying it's easy, but you've been spending your money and your energy talking to, to the wrong audience. So that's why it's very important to have Okay, we can call it uh, growth hacks, but in the, at the end of the day, it's just a different flavor of marketing. It's very, very important to have your marketing in point. And that's why a lot of company and products forget to put that very important ingredient early enough, because probably they are too focused on building the product, fixing the bugs and so on. But it's very important to have that coined down, because that's what ensures growth. Fantastic. If there's one piece of advice you can give to uh, an aspiring entrepreneur uh, who wants to, to, to grow and scale their business, what would it be? Experiment. Like don't, never stop experimenting regardless where your, your business is. Just continue and change little things and do, do A-B testing. You can do A-B testing offline. Like your, your business doesn't have to be a website or an app to A-B test. Just be smart enough and, and experiment with everything, fail and learn. So for example, I was working at one time at, at an application and we were having very low conversion rate towards the, the next step at one point. And we had like 0 0.3 conversion. And I was thinking, how can, how, how can we improve that? So basically, 
uh, what I said, let's, exp let's ask for money. It's like you're having low conversion and you're saying, let's ask for money, <laughs> like putting another barrier. So, so what we did, like the, the prototype was already built and, and we were testing it and we didn't have the right conversion. So I said, let's do an experiment. Let's do a pop-up and say, if you want to go further, you need to pay one euro. Um, what happened is that people suddenly started to appreciate the value in it. They all of a sudden said, hmm, this is not free. So, so after like the third, we, we were offering a choice of, of uh, networking with people at conferences. Wow. So we were suggesting a list of 10 people that you should talk to at yes. a conference. Um, and after the first three, we were asking for money to view the rest of the list. Right. Uh, and what happened? The conversion went from 0.3% to 3%. That's awesome. 10, Ten times. times. And what we did, we did not implement any paying system. So what we did, we just put a pop-up that said, you need to pay one euro to see the rest. There was nothing behind. If the user would have clicked, okay, I want to pay. We were like, thank you for your intention. You can keep swiping. We just wanted to see if you would pay. Oh, like wow. literally that That's was like awesome. five minutes of writing code, a pop-up. So as I said, there's no excuse to not try to come up with ideas and innovate. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was, that was the proof that a very small experiment could yes. lead to a 10 times growth. Which is counterintuitive. Very, like asking for money, yes. like before it was free and we were converting low, yeah. and then we put a barrier and we were converting 10 times as much. Yeah. But, but you cannot know that unless you experiment. And there's like plenty of Lean Startup examples in the stuff that I did where I found out exactly the wrong uh, that I had the wrong assumptions before that. But if you test it, and if you put in the, the right test in place, you're going to see that there's a lot of ideas that might work, and there's a lot of ideas that might not, but that's the learning. Right. Well, you know, since you're saying that, tell me, you're known for your successes, Adrian, uh, but tell me one disaster that went really, really wrong, and what you learned from it. So, so for example, going back to, to uh, the restaurant that I ended up selling. So it had a very good outcome that I eventually sold it. But everything that could have gone wrong uh, at the moment, mind you, I had no idea about Lean Startup principles. So, so uh, when I first started, we did not plan to, to do a restaurant. It's something that accidentally happened. We were planning to build a mini golf course. <laughs> And, and accidentally, we said, but let's put a bar there, let's put a few chairs, let's have some snacks. And eventually, we ended up with a restaurant. And, and the problem was we had no idea how to run a restaurant, and we were too busy to run a restaurant. And that was one of my, the most painful uh, business management things that I have ever done in my life. It, it was like very hard because uh, if you run a restaurant, it kind of helps if you know something about the restaurant industry. I had no idea. Um, so, so that was the whole experience was very painful, and I was very happy when when I got an offer to to sell it and I sold it. Um, but everything that happened before that was a complete disaster. Like we we were losing money. Uh, the personal rotation was very high. The quality of the food that we were delivering was constantly fluctuating because we did we didn't know what to do. I mean, I was hiring people that supposedly knew, but they didn't. So. Um, yeah, overall it was, um, but I don't see it as a disaster. That's why I, I, I thought about it for a while. But yeah, I mean, at that moment I felt that it, it felt bad. It was overwhelming. Uh, but in the end, leaving, leaving aside the fact that, that I managed to get like double of the money that I put into the business, but the learnings that I got out of that experience made me so much richer. And I was able to apply the knowledge of that pain and repeated failure of week after week losing money and not being able to deliver the product that I wanted to deliver. That taught me so much that I was able to apply in stuff that was completely different in other businesses or in other companies that I work with. So it's like never stop trying, never stop testing, never stop learning because that's how you're gonna make your product better and better and better. Fantastic. So 2018 is upon us. What is your advice? What is your areas of focus? And uh, what do you see for the year ahead? Well, I think if we only talk about one year, I, I don't think there's going to be huge changes. Uh, you know, th there's always this big problem of predicting the future by looking at the past. Um, because the real important thing, uh, the, the real big changes are unpredictable 
if you look at past events. Uh, and uh, if you read the Black Swan by Nassim Taleb, that's like very well explained there. So that's why I don't want to go into those kind of like, yeah, it's going to happen this or that, and then everything falls apart or everything is going to explode and be a big boom. Uh, but the trend that I'm currently seeing is that more and more governments support entrepreneurship. Uh, and and what's, what happened here at this conference, I was like, wow, I was hearing a prime minister talking and I thought that was like a CEO. That, that was better than most TED Talks. Uh, so, so I was impressed. But more and more governments are, are seeing the opportunity of supporting entrepreneurs. Um, more and more money is focused into supporting digital transformation and innovation. And more and more people become accustomed to the concepts of lean startup. And if they are not, there's plenty of structures, whether they are accelerators, uh, which can be public or private. There's like uh, contests for, for young entrepreneurs. Uh, there's angel investors. These are all people and structures that if you have an idea and you try something out, you will eventually end up encountering one of them. One of the concepts that is dear to my heart is Startup Weekend. And I'm involved and I'm one of the longtime facilitators for Startup Weekend in, in Europe. And, and I see a lot of people entering Startup Weekend and they have no idea what they are doing, but they just have the passion in them to try something new. So whenever I see that, there's like people that have no background, they don't know anything about lean startup, there's more and more of them. And they get in touch with, the, with this concept, they get in touch with the community that is willing to support them and to help them grow. And this is something that we did not have 5, 10, 15 years ago. This community support of people that are experienced, that have successes or failures, because you can learn a lot of people from people that had big failures, but those are people that are willing to share that. So more and more people uh, are, are getting access to that knowledge. And I think that, that the real change that is going to happen is that this network of support and this network of public and private money that's coming to support startups and entrepreneurship is what's going to push this forward and forward. Um, on the long run, we're going to see which are the disruptive technology. I mean, there's definitely uh, an area that I'm paying close attention to and that I'm working for right now for in the area of self-driving car and transportation. There's definitely virtual reality and augmented reality. There's the blockchain that's going to uh, most likely impact so much of what happens around us. So uh, if your idea is in any of those areas, of course, chances are higher to get, um, to get an investment. But don't just focus on that. There are so many opportunities. If, you're, if your experience is in any of the other domains, just use your domain expertise. And I think um, one of our main tasks as, as uh, community uh, influencers is to tell people that they do not need a technical background to launch a digital business. First of all, because technologies like WordPress are so easy to use by non-tech people. Like you just need half an hour of watching a YouTube tutorial and you can buy a website and set up a WordPress and there you go, you have a basic website. But then also the costs are going down. There's like plenty of freelancers, there's Fiverr.com where you can just go and, and buy very simple services from people. So we need to tell non-technical people that yes, you can do a website, you can, you can start a blog, you can do whatever technical product you want because there's one thing for sure, there's nothing that we technically cannot build. Think of like the most complex algorithm. Think of like, we need to redo Facebook now. How much money and time do you think it would cost? Like probably, I'm not talking about the backend, the servers that they have, that, that's, the size that they have is yeah. huge and that's a complicated technical challenge. But if you want to create a Facebook for 10,000 users, it would literally take probably two to four weeks uh, for like two to four developers. And that's a low budget. Of, of course, you should probably not do it uh, because that market is probably already taken and you like Google Plus tried that and uh, you know how that went. They had more than four developers. But, but exactly. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's so easy to build. Building, is, it seems that that's the problem at the beginning, but that's not. That's not. The difficult part is finding the use case, finding the customers, finding the right problem to solve with the right new solution. And this, as I was saying, this can be prototyped with the help of Lean Startup Principles. You don't need 
a technical background just start doing it or come to startup events and and i'm sure that in the audience there will be a, a tech guy that's there willing to scouting for ideas he's willing to work in a startup but he doesn't have an idea and that's where you can meet your next co-founder just don't stay in your home and keep that idea in your head just start doing and start experimenting thank you so much